G'day players, I am Blunty and this is the PlayStation TV and as of today you can find it on shelves right here in Aussie land and I've spent the last week fiddling with one to find out if this slender game console is worth a damn at all and I'm going to tell you right now, I like it. I like it more than I thought it would actually. The little bugger has utterly charmed me. It's not without its faults, but it has brought me far more joy than frowns. So sit back for a fistful of minutes and I'm going to tell you exactly why I like it. Now, for those unfamiliar with the deal here, the PlayStation TV's beating heart is pretty much just a PlayStation Vita, only without the touchscreen and the touch panel at the back and the battery and the control is stuck on it. Your output is HDMI, and yes, it is protected by HDCP. So should you wish to capture or stream your PlayStation TV gameplay, you'll need something to strip out that pointlessly ineffective and consumer annoying copy protection system. Just like I did with the captured footage you'll see in this very review. The PlayStation TV has Wi-Fi on board, but Sony have smartly also given you a wired Ethernet connection. Very useful for getting the absolute best result possible from the remote play feature. But that said, I was testing the remote play feature on Wi-Fi, and I had no worries at all with the connection quality. You've got a USB port, although that's really only there so you can charge your controller. So stamp out any dreams you may have of hooking up a drive full of musical videos for local playback. That ain't happening. The controller can be either a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4, and either way, it seems Sony assume anyone buying a PSTV will already be a happy PlayStation owner, with existing controllers going spare, ready to use on this. In short, it doesn't come with a controller, so you'll have to score another one separately. I did my testing using a DualShock 3 from my now-retired PlayStation 3, because I've only got one DualShock 4, and it's hooked up to my PlayStation 4. Also around back are the power input and the memory card slot, which of course uses the same memory cards as the Vita. In fact, if like me you already own a Vita with a bunch of stuff already installed on the memory card, you can swap in your existing memory card right into the PlayStation TV and all of the installed apps and games, so long as you're logged into the same PSN account of course, will instantly be recognised by the PlayStation TV. No need to reinstall anything. Around the side is the Vita game card slot. There's a catch though when it comes to playing Vita games because you don't have the touchscreen or rear touchpad or the Vita's cameras. So there is an inherent incompatibility. It won't play all existing Vita games. And for those that do work, there's a few still that remain impractical to actually play. But I'll get to that in a moment too. Sony do have an official list of which Vita games, and for that matter which downloadable PSP games, PlayStation 1 Classics and PlayStation Mini games, that are compatible. And you'll find the link to that list in the video description. Past the tiny but nicely built hardware, the interface is pretty much identical to what you'll find on your Vita. The bubbles, including the option to use themes, the menus, the options, the settings, are all basically identical. There are a few additions for obvious reasons. For things like controllers, Sony's BD remote control is also compatible. You can even use an external keyboard if you like. Useful for the web browser in particular, as without the Vita's touchscreen, you're back to typing on the on-screen keyboard using the D-pad, which is slow and annoying by comparison. There are also settings for your output resolution. Natively, the PlayStation TV is happiest at 720p, but you can go to an upscaled 1080i if you like, or even down to 480p if, you know, you hate your eyeballs for some reason. And of course, you've also got some power-saving auto standby options for the console and the controllers separately. All of these menus work perfectly fine, but the main screens, the bubbles, aren't the ideal layout for controller input only on a big screen. This user interface was designed for finger poking and screen swiping. And when you don't have those options, navigation is both slower and more awkward. So fingers crossed on seeing a UI tweak in an update to make things a little more natural feeling on the TV. So that's all the dry bones stuff. How about the gaming? You know, the reason you buy one of these damn things. Well, amongst the Vita games I have here, the compatible ones worked beautifully well. Now, sure, they're being up to 720p from the Vita's native resolution of 960 by 554 but they still looked fantastically crisp and vibrant up on my big screen TV. They ran like butter in a Brisbane summer, and control felt sharp, responsive, and frankly, even with the DualShock 3, which I've never really been in love with, if we're being honest here, it was still actually far superior to the fiddly thumb stubs and comparatively cramped button layout of the Vita. 
And on a personal note, I do indeed plan to snatch up a DualShock 4 to dedicate to my PlayStation TV when I have some spare cash, as it is far superior again over the DualShock 3. And for those of you it's important to, of course, just like the Vita, there is no region locking on the PlayStation TV. My copy of Capcom vs Street Fighter, for instance, is the Japanese version and it works perfectly. When it comes to games that need some basic touchscreen input for their menus or whatever, there is actually an option, as the Vita does not have L3 and R3 inputs on the sticks natively, so Sony have used those as a toggle input for some basic pointer-based touchscreen input simulation. And it does work okay, if a bit awkwardly, for menus, but for games like Killzone here, for instance, which need it for rapid, decisive, and comparatively precise mid-game input, yeah, it's lousy. Unusable, in fact. Hopefully, at least some of the more popular games with this issue, games which otherwise play very nicely on the PSDV, will get patches to avoid this issue in the future. No guarantees on that, just fingers crossed, you know. Back in the land of PSN games, downloadable games for Vita, PSP, PS1 Classics, and PlayStation Minis. Well, that's actually the secret power of the PlayStation TV. It excels at bringing these games to the big screen. Again, despite being up they look bright, clear, and vibrant, and more importantly, they play beautifully. I'm sure there'll be a few Vita retail games that I'll love playing on the PlayStation TV, and it will prove an indispensable tool for capturing and streaming Vita games better and cleaner than ever possible for me before. And by the way, if you're wondering, Minecraft Vita Edition plays absolutely wonderfully on the PlayStation TV. In fact, again, largely due to the superior controls, Minecraft Vita Edition plays wildly better than it does on the Vita itself. And on that note, as a reminder, if you've got the PlayStation 3 version of Minecraft, it is cross-buy, so you already own it for the PlayStation TV too. But for me, the PlayStation TV carved a claim in the joy centers of my brain by providing the absolute best way yet... <coughs> legitimately, <coughs> to play some old PlayStation 1 favorites, and as a way to suck even more value out of my PlayStation Plus subscription with some fantastic free games every single month. PSP titles look a bit jaggy on the big screen thanks to their even lower native resolution of just 480 by 272 but the gameplay itself remains intact and there's just some pure gems buried in the PSP library going for just a fistful of dollars each. And if you like your old school arcade games, well, there's a bit of a gold mine of those hanging around the corners of the PSN store as well. And they too are far more enjoyable on the big screen than on the not quite pocket sized portables. You see, here's the thing about me and the PlayStation Vita. I like the Vita, it's fine, I reviewed it quite well, but it has almost never left my home. And it's a portable system, so that's a bit weird. 99% of every single time I've played games on the thing, it's been right here on the couch. So being able to lift my head up and see those games on the big screen in front of me with a proper, no compromises, full-sized controller in my big fat man hands, well, I've never been more excited about the huge library of Vita, PSP, PS1 and PS Mini games that once upon a time I'd just kind of scroll past in the PSN store because I never really used my Vita that much. The other gift that the PlayStation TV will give you is a fantastic way to take your PlayStation 4 experience into another room without, you know, having to move your console. Most of us have the PS4 set up in the living room. It makes sense, that's where the best TV usually is and that's where you can make the best use out of the media functions on the PlayStation 4. But if you share your home where other people have different needs to yours for the big screen or maybe you just feel like playing your PlayStation 4 while in bed sometimes, again without having to move the PlayStation 4 around, it's an issue. So, Sony did the remote play thing, and as we know already, it works well on the Vita, and it even works really well on the new Xperia phones and tablets. But now, you can take that remote play experience and put it back onto another TV. And that is fantastic. You do compromise on resolution, of course, just like you do on the Vita. But I never ran into an issue with that. And again, just like native Vita games, the output gets up to 720p for you. I tried games like Korra with its super clean and sharp graphics, and I gave some highly detailed and subtler worlds of games like Destiny a fair go and both behaved and played perfectly well. However, if you're hoping to remote play some video streaming services like Foxtel or Quickflix, for example, you're shite out of luck, I'm afraid. Legal bullcrappery and licensing issues mean that these things are blocked 
from remote play. Some do work though. IGN's app, for example, works perfectly well. And when it comes to media playback, I mean aside from the streaming services, there's a free app that'll connect you to any standard DLNA server on your home network. But be aware, the file compatibility is just like the Vita. That is a bit restricted which may present some issues for you. But for the files that it does like, it works rather nicely. Smooth, clean, and issue-free playback. Nice. So, past the obvious, but still a little disappointing fact that there's a whole stack of Vita games that just can't work with the PlayStation TV's reduced control input options, and past the fact that some apps, which should, under rather simple logic, work fine, like the Flickr app or YouTube, for example, are currently refusing to work altogether. Hopefully an update will fix those. Everything else about the PS TV is nothing but love. Lots of companies have tried this mini console idea. Some have met with, at best, sort of moderate success. Most have been, well, fizzling disappointments, haven't they? But Sony have a huge advantage with the PlayStation TV. Well, two huge advantages, actually. The first one is, of course, the brand. Everyone knows PlayStation. You see it on the shelf, you go, I know exactly what that's about. And with the wild success and popularity the PlayStation 4 has been enjoying, I don't think the PlayStation brand has ever been more popular. The second advantage the PlayStation TV enjoys is the most important one. It already has a massive library of games. A library that, if you take into account the PlayStation 1 classics, goes back 20 years of gaming. And even better, it's a library of cheap games. And I mean cheap games that aren't just the shovelware you see on other places. The PlayStation TV will cost you just under 150 Aussie dollar dues, and it even comes with a code for three free games. Worms Revolution Extreme, Velocity Ultra, and Oli Oli. But the onboard memory is just one gigabyte, so you really want to invest in a Vita memory card. An 8 gig one will run you about $25, so that's not a nightmare. Oh, and if for some reason you don't already have a spare PlayStation 3 or even a PlayStation 4 controller just lying around, you'll want one of those too. Uh, pre-owned a PlayStation 3 controller is maybe $35. But even the whole package still hits just over $200 in total, and that, as far as I'm concerned, is still great value for the best micro console out there. And the very best by a very, very wide margin, as far as I'm concerned. That is the PlayStation TV. I am Blunty. Thank you for watching. hope this has been helpful, and I will catch you next time.